Welcome everyone to the Analytic Mind podcast by Enterprise DNA. This is a podcast which dives into a range of different ideas and tips to empowering a data-led culture within organizations. We want you to develop the analytic mind to create immense value for yourself and your teams. Welcome all to another episode of the Analytic Mind podcast. I'm joined today uh, by Tom Martins. So Tom's actually a bit of a, I would say a bit of a celebrity out there in the in the Power BI community. So it's really awesome to get him on. Uh, we've we've touched base um, once before uh, on on a on a prior in a prior discussion, um, and but very well known. I, I think you 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 communicate with with Brian a lot. You communicate with um, lots of others who who are uh, you know closely related to enterprise DNA and also the Power BI community. So really keen to um, get your insight on a variety of different things i think um in this particular um in this particular podcast um so before before we get into it before we just uh, chat away why don't why don't i throw to you and why don't you just just give the um everyone who's listening in um, a bit more of a background about yourself um and um yeah anything interesting anything interesting um about yourself that, that maybe some some of the listeners don't know about okay so not sure if i can reveal or will reveal some quick secrets about my private life. So, basically <laughs> not that many. So, and yeah, not that many. So, I am working with Microsoft technologies doing analytical things for almost all my professional life. And if I look at some introduction or the introduction slide for doing sessions at conferences there, I, I updated the 20 plus years to 25 plus years because it's a little bit more accurate using now for 25 plus years uh, Microsoft technology. Mm. Then starting with on-prem things, but now it's more or less everything related to cloud. And since it's Advent as an snap-in, let's say, call it for SharePoint, I'm working with the thing that is now called Power BI. Mm -hmm. And I have mm -hmm. to admit, if it's possible, fall in love with a certain tool set tool I did with Power BI. So much more than other, <laughs> other things. Um, and now I'm working as a solution architect for an insurance company that is based in, in Munich. And so what makes my life easy is because I'm living 800 kilometers away from Munich. It's possible, mm -hmm. still possible using this technology that we are now using. So we basically, we use a different technology, but it makes things more easily if your work is related to IT things, basically work from everywhere. So, mm -hmm. And if I'm not doing data things, then I'm cycling with my bike mm -hmm. uh, through the surroundings, through our environment and taking pictures. So I like taking pictures and cycling the bike and uh, so that's that's it and i'm still that's generation good. reading um people sometimes ask me why I do not when i block i sometimes i block my articles are a little bit lengthy and then i get asked hey why do you not make it a short video because i am old and i'm still generation reading mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. And for those who don't know, you are you're you're a Microsoft MVP um, as well. Oh yes, yes, I, yes I do. All, all, so basically, what I what I learned about different technologies about Power BI, a lot of this this what I know is coming because I learned from blogs, I learned from answering questions. I got I learned because someone else answered my my questions in the past. And this is why I, um, why I try to pay back to the community by now 
blogging, answering questions on the community because and because I also believe that it's more simple if we do things together and we, we can achieve more doing things together and for this reason I have other people's leveling up so that we can achieve more more interesting things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this earned me basically the Microsoft Data Platform MVP award. Mm. That's great, that's great. And um, look, I, blogs are what, um, yeah, I, I, I think there's many forms of learning, but blogs are still a truly valuable way. Uh, you know, if, if you can come across a, a great blog and be able to get an in-depth insight about something, that, that, to, that to me is, 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 is as engaging um, or as useful as as a video in some cases. I, I actually just a bit of a sidetrack here. I actually have a subscription to a service called Medium. I'm not sure if you've heard of Medium, but it's just really a sort of blog articles, but all in one platform. I, I, I read it almost daily. It's almost like my newspaper. It honestly is um, because it's all about it's all sort of curated things that I enjoy reading about. And so, um, no, I, I'm a, I'm a big believer too that I think I, I don't think the blog is is is, is going anywhere. I, th I still think it's as valuable as, as it's ever been. So written uh, content. So I guess sometimes it's more simple. Mm. Uh, uh, watching a video, but sometimes I can't remember the things I just saw, and I have to going backwards just to know what setting has been clicked. And this makes it mm. a little bit more simple for me to watch the screenshot printed to the book. It's this setting and not that. Yeah, it, it's so, it is so interesting to think how shortened everyone's um, um, engagement in things is becoming, isn't it? Like with with sort of short film video and. It's sort of just getting shorter and shorter. I don't know if that's a negative thing. I think I think it's, you know, I, I still think it's just you're probably going to need a mix in the future. I think if, if your if your if your diet of um, viewing or learning is all this very short formed based stuff, I I think that you're not going to get the the full depth of knowledge on a particular topic than if you do a variety of things where. You maybe watch some of that, but then you dig a little bit deeper into some forum work, into some blogs, into some structured training. I, th I, th I think you've got to keep a healthy balance to truly learn something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm sort of a bit biased there, but um, uh, I don't. Yeah, I, 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 I don't see it as a total negative. But I, th I think if, if that if it becomes, you know, because you, you think about the the, the younger generation. Um, coming through now, you know, who are just finishing school and doing university, who are growing up with all this media, this short form media, you, you you do wonder, you do wonder if it's going to have an impact. It might not, I don't know, but it, it could, you know. So I, I am pretty sure that you are biased. Um, <laughs> and for, for, the, for a very good reason. So sometimes uh, it's enough to find the answer to a question. And this question can be answered by watching a two minute video. How exactly is this thing done in mm. Power BI? How is this used with Dex or using this to, to solve a Spark thing? Mm -hmm. But and this is something different than being understanding a concept. Um, and a complex thing like incremental refresh and, for example, and things like slowly changing dimensions in star schema modeling is a complex thing. And this can't be explained, maybe just described in a two-minute video. And for this reason, I, due to timing things, because there's a lot of going on in the Microsoft data platform at the current moment, I am not have much consumed of 
the content that is, I do not know, that is curated uh, on an enterprise learning platform called Enterprise DNA. Maybe you have heard about it. <laughs> um, so there are so many things that I want to watch and learn. And the mm. fact is, it's not a curated set of two-minute videos. So mm. I guess the more you want to understand, on learn and the deeper it's you have to dig and find something that suits your needs. Yeah, yeah, no, nice, nice point. Well, that was a, I guess, a, a little bit off topic, but an interesting one nonetheless. Something that um, that I mull over and um, I all, is always front of mind, considering you know we have our own sort of training platform. It's like how to how can you best deliver the uh, um, the the service to the to the user, to the customer. And so the short form thing is, is something we're thinking more seriously about, but just not sure about just yet. So we're, 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 we're holding off, but interesting to get your insights. One, one of the things I just want to jump to actually, that I think would be really interesting to get an overview of is, so you're a solution architect, right? What does that actually look like and involve in a, Week to week basis within a large company like Munich, right? I think that'd be you know something something quite interesting, particularly with your Microsoft folks. So it is. So we are as a team are owning the Power Platform, meaning uh, Power App, Power Automate. So basically everything that belongs into this product suit case, Power Platform from Microsoft. We are owning that as a team. And I am, or with, the co with colleagues, we I am a specialist focusing on Power BI. So, and in our organization, we want to enable our business users to solve their data-related questions, topics on their own using Power BI. So, and <clears throat> sometimes these people or my colleagues, some, some colleagues are not that comfortable with Power BI because they did not ever use any kind of BI tool, but now they, they have certain set of data. And sometimes this data is just a bunch of Excel files located somewhere. Sometimes this data is created by data engineering teams and data science teams and is residing somewhere in Azure on Spark. And now the people or the colleagues are asking, hey, how can we create a data visualization from this? Mm -hmm. So sometimes, and this is how how we we meander through our day to day business. Sometimes we are just supporting um, teams by answering a question: What visual? And these questions are ranging from: Hey, what visual data visualization fits best for this use case? From Hey, how is our architecture if you have large amounts of data? And sometimes we are just answering questions. Sometimes we are supporting project teams. So it, it depends a little bit of, let's say, the type of the project when we are getting directly involved. So for now, for example, I am working with a project team that has a large on-premises tabular instance. Mm -hmm. And so now we are trying to, and it's a huge set of data. And it's on-premises because it needs to be close to the source data. Mm -hmm. because it's refreshed basically more than once an hour. Um, so basically it's refreshed uh, as fast as possible. Mm 
And this is why it's still on-premise because your data source is, the real data source is also on-premise, so they're sitting in the same rack to avoid network latency, things like that. And sometimes I'm just answering a question, hey, uh, I was wondering how this is doing, and then I say to a colleague, just click here. So it's ranging from challenging architecture questions to help people find the proper setting. And this is why, for example, if I'm if I'm getting asked, hey, what are you doing to pay your rent? So, and then I'm saying, I am a solution architect trying to helping configuring and building and architecting an analytic solution. Sometimes this is a little bit of work for some people I meet. So for this reason, I also started because I like that term. I like the term that I'm I'm saying I'm a Power BI Sherpa. Mm. Because yeah. I'm helping people on their journey from somewhere to somewhere else being successful. And so this, and because we are owning uh, the power platform in the Power BI environment, department in the IT organization. Maybe it would also be sufficient to say Power BI admin. Yes, I do that, but it's not exactly describing um, what I'm doing. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm calling me Power BI Sherpa. I like it. I like it. I guess one of the things that I note from hearing you describe that is obviously you know being in a, a much like a very large organization it's not using power bi isn't as easy as say how microsoft market it you know it's it's not it's not just some visualization tool you need to actually build an entire solution or or application um and when you're much larger there's a lot of moving parts to that and there's a lot of different stakeholders to that, I imagine, also. And so I guess that's where you step in and you have a look from a high level. Where's the data sitting? How do we get the data? How do we engineer some pipelines into a Power BI environment? What reports we need to build and models we need to build on top of that data to get the answers that users want? So there's there's many facets to it rather than just an alternative in a in a sort of smaller organization or or a smaller team where you're just maybe connecting to Excel and you're creating a, a, a really nice dashboard. You know, that's that's a simple version. There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that in my personal view. But I I, I just imagine and be, be good to get your thoughts on this as well, is that when you get into you know the the size of Munich Re, you know, into that realm, that's where a lot more work needs to be done on the overall solution. This so is the architecting of the entire um, application. So, yeah, yes, absolutely. So there are solutions, as you said, they're, they're very, very, from a technical perspective, very simple solutions, getting this data from this Excel file, make it, even, I have to admit, there are reports that have a pie chart in it. So I have to admit, so we are strongly advocating to remove this pie charts, but pie charts are good for certain data visualization aspect. So, uh, and that's, it's done. It's basically, it's, it's really simple, but there are also very complex solutions, um, that are, um, looking or use um, incremental refresh because the amount of data is large. Mm -hmm. And this, this is, and this is also <laughs> something why I like to, uh, call at least myself Power BI Sherpa. It's also because we are safeguarding our environment. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned data modeling. And data modeling is maybe the most crucial part in having fast, efficient, and um, do not consume all the resources of the capacity. So we are always meandering between 
let things happen and please colleagues become a data modeling data DAX expert. So, but, and for this, we have, there are great, great colleagues and we have a lot of trainings that we are offer to our mm -hmm. uh, colleagues. Um, but it's, it's difficult. It's, you can't do this because this is not allowed inside our organization. Mm -hmm. For example, there are Excel files because colleagues become Excel files from their, from their customers, their clients on a regular basis. Um, and it's somewhere on, um, on a shared, low, shared network drive. Mm -hmm. But we are not supporting access to shared network drives from our gateway clusters because this would mean that the service account of the gateway has the most access to all the files. So we, we do not allow that. So, but, and then you have to do this, upload this in SharePoint library, for example. Oh, really? Can we not just, no, we cannot. So. It's safeguarding from resource consumption, meeting um, certain compliance requirements, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So it's not, yeah. but it's fun. And from, from, so I started working with Munich almost, I'm not sure, eight, seven years ago, mm -hmm. then as an external consultant and now I'm working as a solution architect directly for Munigree for uh, one and a half year. As I started, I was totally consumed by or excited by all these new duck things. And I was always asking and pushing my, my colleague, let's try this out. Let's do this. Find a project mm -hmm. that wants to use this. I was always mm -hmm. pushing that. And now I'm more on the governance. So I, I love to safeguard our environment. And I say now, no, we can't use this because we can't enable this tenant setting because it's on and not at, uh, selected on, it's an on for the whole organization. And because for this reason, it keeps off. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's quite fascinating, actually, um, when, when you really um, dig a little bit deeper, because there's, there is just a lot of moving parts, realistically, if you want to deploy scalable data solutions. Right. And that's what we are ultimately trying to achieve with Power BI, but increasingly the Power Platform as well. We're trying to build things in a in a scalable way that um, fit all requirements of users and stakeholders, uh, but also drive you know, continuity within an organization. You know, you, when when I presume when you're dealing with um, you know big projects. You need to have confidence that they will they will um, last, right? They, they they're not sort of uh, um, there's no risk involved there, like key key people risk or you know any any compliance risk. There's just a lot of a lot of things. I, th I think I think a lot of us analysts, to be honest, if I'm if I'm if I'm being um, honest from from my own perspective, wouldn't enjoy a lot of that. Uh, wouldn't enjoy a lot of that. We just love to just get in there and start developing and start building, right? Um, so I, I'm sure you have to deal with that too. I'm interested. I'm interested to know where you're, you're dealing with, um, you know, internal so, uh, internal users who just want to get at it, but uh, you've got to sort of yes. pull pull them back. So, so yes, I absolutely I, I like developing things, and this is we are developing things, and we use Power BI for doing this for a couple of reasons. So one of the reason is it's even if it's old or now it's it's still younger than 10 years, but it's still rapidly developing. Uh, the Power BI team is throwing great features continuously to us. And it's fun. 
using features to getting questions answers. I this is fun. And I, I'm I started out with writing SQL statements. And I love writing a SQL statement, even if it's now DAX. And there it returns a value and people are no more now no more because they never seen this value in this context i i love when this insight creating thing is happening i, I ask no no question but i also like to look at other related things this is this has changed so now i am I am thrilled if I can talk to owners of data sources. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you know that your data source is hit by 30 refresh scenarios per day? Hey, what do you think if we can combine this and create a data flow that then is shared across the 30 or so things. Mm. This makes things more simple. This reduces complexity on our Power BI data set thing. And it also saves resources of the original data source. So it makes things more simple. And this is also things that I that I really Love and mm. one of my most favorite things that I'm now building things is the custom visual DNA because I love data visualization. I also love mm -hmm. that, and I like to describe how this visual should look like. And mm -hmm. after some trying, I get something that looks like my imagination. So, and this is, I love building. Yes, of course, it's fun. There's so much going on around the Power BI ecosystem and, and up and down. I mean, there's an entire tech stack around Power BI just by itself now. Um, so there, there is there is this constant learning that you can do, right? And I presume that's that's individ for individuals, but also organization-wide, like you, you, you're probably out there promoting internally all of these great things that you can do and you can optimize. And I, I presume that's a big part of your role as well. It, it is. So, of course, we have to make people want to use Power BI. And it's very likely that there are colleagues outside that have more knowledge about a very specific topic inside, as you mentioned, Power BI is not a data visualization tool. Power BI is in, by itself, from my understanding, it's a complete analytical platform or environment because there are so many features that are very well hidden. Um, under the surface and it's not five seconds to install five minutes to wow or the other way around <laughs> so it's 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 possible and but it's it's not like I, that every time i actually i'm i'm smiling and, and and laughing because i i had the exact same conversation in, in my last part podcast i recorded and um the the real the reality is, is that Microsoft have obviously had to make some marketing decisions, or their marketing team sits in a totally different building or something, and um, they just they just decided that was the way to go. And yeah, you can't they're they're pros at it; they know what they're doing. Um, so good on them. But you know, the way I look at it, the way I explain Power BI and 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 the Power Platform, it's your data engine. It's your your analytical engine within your organization. Um, and I think that's a good visual. Right, just just think about an organization as an entity, and think about what what could drive the the data 
and the um, analytics that goes on within that entire organization. Well, Power BI as an entire stack and an ecosystem of tools can do that by itself. <laughs> you, I, I honestly don't even think you need that many other third-party tools. And there's thousands and thousands of them. But the reality is you can do 95 to 98% of what you need with just what Microsoft are providing here. Would you agree? This is a very difficult question. Mm. And so what was the percentage you said? 98? I, I, I believe that you can get maybe, maybe I, I, I said I, 95 to 98% of what I think uses the, the value that you can generate. I mean, whether it's like all of the different projects you can do, I don't uh, you know. I'm just I'm just saying that I think that you can do pretty much anything you could want to do or need to do or um, value add that you want to create. You can probably do the vast majority of it with just the tools that Microsoft have uh, that, that they provide in the analytics space. That, so, that would be my so then, my fear. Okay, so my hundred percent are described like this, I can create a bar chart based on an Excel file hosted in a SharePoint environment. But I can also create a bar chart that is fueled by enormous amounts of data that are processed by a really large Spark cluster. Mm -hmm. So, and for all of these two things, I can use Power BI. So I would say Power BI is good for creating a bar chart from almost 100% of all the cases. Mm -hmm. uh, even if the Spark cluster is more or less tied to whenever I say it's okay, it's a tabular instance and it's relatives, uh, or Power BI and its relatives. So this is, uh, yes, but it's it's a high percentage. Um, and maybe it's, I think it's 100%. I can use more or less Power BI everywhere. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, I, I, I agree, I agree. Obviously, I think we're biased, we're, we're pretty biased, but I just... <laughs> I uh, yes. just 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 a touch, but you know, I I I I'm, I like to stay across everything in, in the data space because if if, the, if if Microsoft started to because my my personal view is if Microsoft really started to stuff things up, if they really started to go in a different direction, which has happened before, um, you know, they, 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 they have um, not always been sort of a leader in the space for for you know until until they really got their act together with Power BI. So I, I'm I'm the person who likes to stay well across lots of goings on in the data landscape, what other companies are doing. And, and it amazes me how many other tools are out there and that are being created. But I always just come back and I think, do we really need this? Because Power BI can do it. Power, you can do it with Power BI and you can, um, you know, there, there's so many more benefits to doing it. Not only like initial costs, but also just continuity. You know, it's going to be a, a well regard. It's going to be a tool that's not go, it's not going anywhere. It's backed by you know the biggest, one of the biggest companies in the world. It's going to um, have. You know, there's going to be so much knowledge built up around it, just like there is like it, it, in Excel, for example. So you know, there's just so many positives to being in this universe. But, but, and, that, and that's my assessment from. From constantly looking out there at other options, at other ideas, but I keep referring back, thinking this is the place to be. This is the place to be right now because you can do it all. You can do it all, and there's there's so many positives to to, to staying within the Microsoft ecosystem. I I absolutely agree that maybe we are a little bit of biased. Yes, mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> But we are, we as a team, are also constantly challenged by by colleagues. Hey, why are we not using this? Because we are not using this, at least not now. So Power BI, of course, is challenged by our colleagues, and for this reason, it's it's good 
that the Power BI team is doing what they are doing, um, constantly evolving. So this is this is really really cool because we are having tools that are evolving as we as an organization are evolving. We are learning. More, um, people are becoming more and more data literate, mm -hmm. meaning the questions they are asking are becoming more and more complex amounts of data. So everything is evolving. And so this is this is good. And yes, of course, we are biased. But to be honest, I do not care that much about my bias and leaning towards a certain thing because um, I do not want to. So as I, I as I said, I uh, if I do not data things, I, I'm taking pictures, mm -hmm. and I when I I. I spent some money on my equipment. And when I come to this questions, hey, do I need to buy? And I want to buy a new lens. So of course, then I'm I'm looking around, reading researches, reviews, and things like that. And, and then I decide. And then I have this. And then I realize a month later, whoa. A different lens has been published to the market. And from a technical point of view, maybe it has a broad, if it's a zoom lens, then it has a broader range, a wider range. Um, but then I have to question myself, do I need this lens instead of the one I bought? Or do I have to master my lens, my equipment. Uh, may, may, maybe I have a good, I have good equipment, but I can't use it because I did not master all the features. And until I have mastered all the features, or when I master all the features, I can even do things that other people would not think possible with mm. my equipment. And I think this is also. Um, valid for Power BI, but also for every every uh, self service or end user focusing tooling. You can. There is certain features that are done better by other tools. Maybe, oh, of course, not maybe, of course, but you can also do things with Power BI, every tool, that no one has was thinking possible doing that. And if you are talking about Power Platform, especially the integration with Power Apps and Power Automate and things like that. Yeah. Um, so we, we, we had an internal fair where we sh were showcasing a little example was creating a Power App integration and also some inbuilt AI capabilities, meaning we were handwriting a note on a screen. And this was immediately pushed to a Power BI data set. The handwriting was uh, recognized or was transformed into text. And it was, um, it was, if it, was a good command or a bad command. So the sentiment analysis was done. So a lot is possible. Yeah. No, that's, uh, I think you've mentioned a few. I mean, that's that's a good example. You mentioned Deneb before as well. So another way to do a lot of things that users don't think are possible. Um, you know, there's the, there's the Python integration, R integration. Um, I, I actually like a lot of the the sort of architecting things that have been created recent in recent years. Um, you know, I think that's really transformed and enabled so much more than even most people even realize. You know, just in terms of like building that that sort of underlying data engine within your business. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. Obviously, um, 
I was going to ask, I was going to ask, what are, what are some of the challenges? Like you're, you know, I don't, I, like, I've talked, I've talked, I've, I've talked to lots of people on this, um, on, on, on the podcast so far, but I don't actually think we've really dived into any of the issues or challenges or things that just are really, really hard when you're trying to implement a analytics implementation at a really large organization. Like what, what, what are some, what are some, I mean, probably don't need to go into specifics, but just like, what are some examples of just the hardest things that you've had to deal with to actually get good solutions out there? So basically, I guess, um, the absolutely hardest thing is to form the proper team. Um, maybe so what you what you mentioned requires a, a lot of different skills from starting with formulating or formulating the requirements and then translating these requirements into some kind of architecture and then there's development things and things that are maybe that look simple um, if it's on a PowerPoint slide, so nothing uh, is PowerPoint. So um, if it looks simple on PowerPoint, maybe then what is if we scale this? If it's not 100 Excel files that are residing in a power, in a SharePoint library, what if it's 10,000? Or what is if are there 100,000 of Excel files residing in a SharePoint library and growing? How does this scale? And what is what happens if the solution becomes successful, meaning other people want to use this as well? What is so, and this requires so many different skills that it's hard to form. The most hardest thing is being aware that there are so many skills are required. First, the awareness that many skills are probably required and then founding a team. So um, so this is, this is, I think, most hardest thing, even and may, maybe also especially in a large organization than we are. So we are an insurance company. So for this reason, we have a neck on data uh, because we are earning money or uh, our money with thinking that we understand data better as someone else, meaning risk analysis and things like that. This is how we, uh, how our insurance company in general is, in general is earning money. Mm -hmm. And, um, we have, there are a lot of talented people. And sometimes, for example, my colleagues in our Power BI team, we are not, currently, we are not bored. Basically, everything else is then bored. And now, if you are asked, if you are getting asked, hey, can you please help us? No, sorry. Yes, we can, but in 12 months. Oh, no, we have to start now. So no, we can't. We can help you find someone else. Maybe and also we are also working with uh, consulting companies. So I, I, so this is how I met Munich. And then it has to fit and find the required. So first, being aware different skill set are required, finding them and then forming the team. So basically, everything can be done using the technology, but forming the team is the most hardest thing, I guess, and most challenging. Mm. 
Yeah, that's interesting. And, and look, so true. So, so true. When, when you really think about it, you can't get anything done unless you've got the right people on board. Um, what do you, what do you what do you put that down? What do you put the team collecting the team difficulties down to? Is it is it because we're still you know these, some of these tools are still relatively new and there's just a skills gap? Is it that these things are just too hard for the everyday um, business or Excel you know, business user or, or um, the everyday um, team member? Do you have any thoughts as to why? You know, what, why is it so hard? So, so if I was uh, describing this difficulties with, with, with as a team set up and forming the team, yeah, uh, it was because of um, you mentioned a, a, a larger project. Mm -hmm. So if I'm if I'm reducing everything down to just using Power BI, Power Query, and not terabytes of data, if I'm reducing this, then and because we are we are um say in the beginning i said it's we are we want our business users to create their solution on their own mm. and so now we provide technology a thing called power bi desktop this can be ordered easily but just going to our uh, uh, Windows uh, company Windows Store select Power BI, and of course this also requires us that there is some promoting this. Hey, you have a business intelligence here. Yeah, may, maybe this Power BI thing is good for. And every tooling is requiring is requiring some knowledge and so i am a power bi expert that is not getting bored in our organization no. so this is also for the business users they are not bored they are not waiting on hey how can i how can i model many to many relationships what are many to many relationships and what so this is adding on top and so this is always balancing and for this reason it's providing learning materials but also providing or recommending best practices mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for example our current recommendation is separate the content from the data, having two Power BI X files and having also two workspaces because maybe development happens, content development happens with row level security, keep in mind. So for this reason, we are uh, recommending, even not now, maybe in the future, but this recommendation is adding some additional effort to the business teams because we do not own the workspaces we own the power platform and every manage management thing regarding this workspaces has to be done by the power bi sorry by the business team so adding users things like that we provide tools to get this their life more simple but so i i think it's because it's we do not have we are not as everyone we are not getting bored at work so and new technology means new adding new things this that have to be learned and then the willingness to consider this as an investment into the future. Now, maybe I have to spend an extra hour a week or things like that. But then 
I will save time in the future if I learn this. So, so this is difficult, and I think it's challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, those those are some interesting, um, interesting thoughts, and it's it's a lot. It's really along the same lines as what I've I've thought for a, for a, for a long time is that these tools they truly empower. They, they can really empower a lot of great. And positive initiatives um, within organizations. Possibly the trickier part is not the actual usage, like getting people to use it and play around with it. It's it's getting alignment on what people are are doing, so that, that there is actually success in what and in, in, in what can be the output that can be achieved with these technologies. And to me, that was sort of along the lines of what what you were sort of getting at is that you know there's there's a lot of second level things that you need to think about with with a deploy with a wider deployment in terms of just um getting the getting the troops together to actually make it happen in a seamless and uh effective and optimized way um to do that collectively uh and so you know to be successful and to reduce the issues and challenges that you have having a really strong plan about empowering the team to actually ha do all those things well uh, is seriously important it you know and i presume it would make, make make your life easier um, and also bring a lot more success and continuity to what um, what you're actually doing in this particular space absolutely so mm -hmm. i guess working with a lot of colleagues um Using Power BI, we have we if we are considering ourselves experts, then we have to things let happen. Meaning, there are data models that are not one hundred percent perfect. Not to mention data visualizations, things from a data storing person. Things have to happen. So, because we, our colleagues want to move fast, they want their answers quickly. So now we are trying to roll back this and make some kind of garbage collection. So I am planning to look for the data sets that are, if they are refreshed, take a long, long time, assuming that a data refresh that can, takes a very little time, maybe the Power Query M thing can be optimized and then mm. asking for help. And um, it's also possible to um, fetch SQL queries, fetch, uh, get the DAX statements. This is, of course, has to be in consent with the owners of the data sets. And then we want to look at the DAX statements and if we discover a pattern, so maybe asking chat GPT, is this a good duck statement? So and maybe so for example, and then we want to also do this uh, pushing back into our trainings. We had a lot of trainings in 2021 and until two uh, 22. So but Let's say they are, it's from starting with Power BI to what is a little bit more than a sum, DAX sum. And now we are considering creating data flows, trainings, what is the difference? What do I have to think about? So we are always behind our users because they have to have it now. And not mm. when we are done with best practice recommendation and things like that. So mm. this mm. is challenging. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. What are you most excited about with the future of Power BI? I can't tell. This is something. <laughs> this is. This is uh, so, so that's a bit of a giveaway. So it's a, it's a specific feature that you're excited about. Well, what about what about what about maybe even longer term, just broadly, broadly speaking, 
what 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 are what are you most excited about in this space? Is it is it is it the integration of ChatGPT into Power BI? Is it just so ChatGPT? So any anything anything like that? So so what I'm 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 really excited about is that. powerful analytical tools or a tooling or a tool set will become more and more accessible to the users. So maybe um, it was it was years ago when it took, let's say two or three months uh, if a department was requesting, hey, we need some SQL server for our data warehousing thing. And I'm here, I'm not talking about uh, the price. I'm just talking about the time and until it was up and running. So it, it was taking a long time. And now if I'm looking for an example into the Azure environment, hey, I need a Spark cluster. I hit, of course, I'm not, once again, I'm not talking about pricing or things like that. It's there instantaneously now. And I guess this is what I'm really, really excited about is the provisioning and providing access to the analytical tool set. And maybe somehow everything tied into Power BI. Yeah, I, I like that one. The, the thing that comes to mind when you say that is the speed to scale, to scale yeah. up these, um, yeah. these these analytical products or these data products that you can create internally. Is is I I, I don't think it, it, it we we can approve we we forget. Uh, I think a lot of the time how hard this was ten years ago, <laughs> how hard yeah. any of this was ten years ago. Um, you know, you had to get on-prem servers. You needed all of this other technology, and then it's just becoming so much easier and quicker and cheaper. It's 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 amazing. It's it's truly amazing. Um, so and I, I, I think I, it's just a, as I was starting my career at Munich Re as an external consultant, um, I was asking for a SQL Server. It was okay. Of okay. It was a very specific on premise. It was a very specific ask because it was had to be in a certain network, subdomain, whatever. I'm not a network guy, but it has it was special. But nevertheless, it was taking uh, three to four months, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. And now it's Hey, your SQL Server instance is there, even if it's in our currently our on-premise environment. Okay, it's everything is virtualized, or if it's in Azure. So from requesting, approved, rolling out, provisioned, done. So this is something that we. Yes, you're right. This is sometimes we always forget how difficult it was then. Mm -hmm. And also sometimes I I'm wondering about my my colleagues sometimes or everyone else in the community if a certain duck statement is running 80 seconds. Of course it's slow but this maybe is because of its bad, simply bad DAX code, or it's computing really, really complex things on a large amount of data. So, and sometimes we are also used to, hey, it it has to be answered, the question has to be answered in sub-seconds. Yes, I like that. But because it's, I found my my um, YouTube video in the seconds, 
and it is a short video and now I learn a certain what this checkbox means. Mm. Um, sometimes it's difficult to to understand the perspective. Where are we? Where have we been last year? Where are we now? Where do, do we want to go tomorrow? So it's always a little bit difficult. So, but I can tell the analytical platform using this in Power BI is the future is bright. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it, it, it seriously, it seriously is. Um, I guess I think back to what you know, just just thinking aloud around what what you were just saying is that the exciting thing is that it's not it's not slowing down. It's not slowing down. So you know we, we've got we've had so much improvement. It's just been exponential improvement. And I just think there's going to be more. You know, you, you've got to think. You've got to think that it's just going to be even more. There's going to be, you, it's going to be even faster to create. You know, to create reports and dashboards. Um, you're going to have AI um, assistants who can help you as well. Um, you'll be able to scale up, scale down, whatever you want. Um, you'll be able to layer on applications automations you know you'll be able to build these and you full fully blown applications and i just think it's just going to become easier it's going to be quite quicker you're going to have you know ways that um or supporting technologies that will just enable it quicker and, and hopefully microsoft will will find ways to integrate them um as, as quickly as that as they or practically as they can so, so yeah and and and, and, it, and, and it's that omnipresence I, I i like i like this word of omnipresence of data of, of data insights, not 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 just tabular data, but just just insights, right? Like, um, I, I always I'm I'm I, I don't I don't know if anyone else does this as extensively as I I personally do, but I am able to I I view my Power BI reports more on my mobile devices than I do on my desktop because I'm looking at them on uh, on my phone, I'm looking at them on my iPad, and um. I think you know that that's sort of the evolution. I right? was like, everything else is moving so fast and behind the scenes, and then you get this as a consumer, as a as a user of these um, the outputs of these technologies. You just get this omnipresence of data insights to help you make you know better decisions, etc. And that, at the end of the day, um, is where I think big value is created. Big gains are are, are created, um, and it sort of ties in all of the you know things that you've you've mentioned the. The, my thoughts around these exponential uh, improvements, you know, the, the output, the, the, the consumable output is superior. It's omnipresent. It's everywhere, you know, and, and it's empowering, you know, better, better decisions, better, um, better outcomes. So, so this is, this is exciting. And it's also exciting how things have improved over the past. Two examples, my girl is not as much, is basically not on social internet. So she is not never she is not using Twitter or any things, but I do. And sometimes I have to tell the world that I'm thinking on the woman I love. And whenever I do that, I use a spe specific hashtag. This mm -hmm. specific hashtag is grabbed by a Power Automate thing mm -hmm. that because I connected this Power Automate to a Twitter, to my Twitter account. Mm -hmm. And if there's something that is using this hashtag, a short message is sent to her mobile phone. Hey. <laughs> I was thinking at you about on Twitter, and so and I, I have to. I was thinking about you. I have to tell the world that I do that. Here's a short message. So because Very cool. and this is has been easy. It, it took me, I guess, less. So the most part was what short message provider I use because I do not want to spend a fortune on telling the world that I love my my wife. And the other thing, when I when I I'm out for taking pictures, I created uh, 
a power automate thing that a push then I push a button. Unfortunately, this is not tracked, uh, cannot be done automatically. So I push a button on my iPhone. I am here. Here I'm taking photos. It's 10.30 a.m. Push this into somewhere, re recording my location. Maybe I want to have this photo spot. So, and it took this, took this guy took me 30 minutes. And it's, so easy and now i now i can evaluate where did i spend the most time on my photo tours can mm -hmm. discover tracks using custom visuals and things like that it's mm -hmm. amazing i love it and and i think my, my uh, if i could just leave one final thought on that is that the only thing holding anyone back really when you listen to those examples is, is creativity isn't it it's creativity yeah, yeah, and yeah. and um, <clears throat> and ideas and innovation. You know, just you've just got to think creatively. Think creatively yeah. around what you could do because you know, with all of that exponential gain that we've seen in recent years, you know, truly anything is becoming possible. It's just, it's honestly become going to become easier. It's going to become even easier, um, yeah. in my in my opinion. Well, I think I think. We might wrap up. I think we've gone. We've actually gone over our hour that we we had planned. So, um, oh, they went fast. That. They went very fast, very fast. Thank you very much for for joining me. Any any final thoughts? Um, how can others um, learn more? Well, like uh, get in contact if they want. Uh, I don't know if you even want them to get in contact, but <laughs> but well, uh, sure. um, it just just hey, just get to know you a little bit better, maybe. So basically, you can follow me on on Twitter. It's I'm not sure if. Somewhere I can I can provide the the Twitter handle if they can or on LinkedIn reach out. So my final thoughts is everything is and I have to I quote uh, you Sam. It's about mm -hmm. the omnipresence of data mm -hmm. and it's about creativity and it's learning. So mm -hmm. this is this is everything I guess. So. It's learning, creativity, and how to get information from data. I like it. I like it. I think that's a great way to end. Well, thank you, Tom. Thanks for joining me. And it was a um, pleasure. Appreciate. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, great to have you on. Um, great to have you on and great to be connected again. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, don't forget to subscribe uh, on your favorite um, listening channel. And uh, yeah. Um, really really enjoyed um a deep dive here and some really interesting thoughts from a from a real mvp a real a, a real yeah. uh, a real celebrity out there in the um in the power bi ecosystem so so once again tom thanks a lot and hope uh, thank, hope thank, you got, 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 got there. thank you very much bye everyone thank thanks all thanks for tuning in everyone it's great to be connected and i hope you are enjoying the content we're creating through the Analytic Mind podcast. If you enjoyed this session, make sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notified of each episode as we release them. If you want to learn more about Enterprise DNA and the many initiatives we're working on, check out www.enterprisedna.co. There we have a range of resources to download, events to attend, and information to explore. We're leading the charge around this new paradigm we're living in, where tools like Power BI can literally change how an organization manages, analyzes, and distributes insights that can make an impact. It's an exciting moment in the analytics space. So glad that you're on this journey with us. Take care.